Welcome to my channel, I'm Gary Viryawan and in today's video, I want to share to you my travel photography, camera and lens setup using Micro Four Thirds. Let's go! So in just a few weeks, I will travel to a destination that I won't reveal right now, but I will reveal on later videos. So if you want to learn more about where I will go, please subscribe to my channel. But basically in today's video, I want to share to you my Micro Four Thirds camera and lenses that I will bring on this particular trip what kind of camera that I will bring, what kind of lens that I will bring, and hopefully you'll be able to learn about some travel photography setup, especially using Micro Four Thirds camera and lenses for your future trips. So for me personally, when I travel somewhere, especially when it comes to travel photography, there are always two kinds of destinations. First destination is nature-oriented destination where you prominently do landscape photography and scenery photography. And then the second kind of destination is urban or city kind of destination where you'll do plenty of street photography, architecture photography, environmental portrait, that kind of stuff. This destination that I will visit is more of a urban kind of destination where there are lots of cities, buildings, and concrete, streets, that kind of stuff, but it will still have a little bit of nature kind of elements to it. That means I will have to adjust what camera to bring, what lenses to bring, so that I can get the most out of this location. I made plenty of this kind of travel photography setup before in my channel. You might want to check some of those. But basically, every trip will always be different and also my preference keep changing all the time. So today I want to share what I think will be the most efficient, most effective travel photography camera and lens setup featuring my Micro Four Thirds camera and lenses and also some other different kinds of cameras as well so that you can learn better and prepare for your own trip in the future. So for those of you who already followed my channel, you might already know why I choose Micro Four Thirds camera system for travel photography. But for those of you who are new, I just want to say that Micro Four Thirds camera system, I think is the best camera system for travel photography because you can select smaller camera bodies and lenses so that you can save some space and weight inside your luggage, especially with that seven kilogram weight limit for your carry on inside the airplane. But you're not compromising much in terms of image quality and performance. You can still get pictures that are significantly better than the pictures taken using your smartphone. Anyway, now I want to share my setup, my cameras, my lenses, some accessories that I will bring on this particular trip. First, let's talk about camera body and the main camera body that I will bring on this particular trip will be my Panasonic Lumix GX85. This camera is just so small, so lightweight, and it's just easy to carry around. And it's also inconspicuous. It doesn't scream an expensive pro level camera. It doesn't look like a pro DSLR or a pro mirrorless. This just looks like a tourist camera and that can really help me, especially for street photography. Image quality of pictures taken using this camera is just nice in my opinion, even though it uses older 16 megapixel sensor from 2016. I still think the pictures taken using this camera still looks very relevant today. It doesn't look outdated. The colors are nice. The details are there. I just think it's overall really nice. This camera also features amazing in-body image stabilizer for both still photography and also for recording video. In this trip, I will not only take pictures, but I will also shoot some videos as well. So eyepiece is really important for me to be able to get that smooth handheld video footage without using gimbals and whatnot. And for low light photography, if the subjects are moving, then I can really rely on the eyepiece and get into really slow shutter speed without camera shaking or whatever. Manual control with this camera is also excellent. I have plenty of buttons and dials that I can use to change settings such as ISO, shutter speed, aperture, white balance. 
because when I'm doing travel photography, even though almost all the time I'm shooting in aperture priority mode, sometimes I'm switching to shutter priority or manual mode because I want more control over my exposure settings and being able to change it easily without going to the menu is just really nice. And then another feature that I really love from the GX85 that I think is important for travel photography is the ability to charge this camera using USB uh, cable without having to remove the battery and use a separate external battery charger. I think that is a big plus. That means I don't have to bring the battery charger with me and that's one less thing to carry and I'm just really happy with that kind of efficiency. Now let's talk about lenses and my primary lens for this trip will be the Panasonic Lumix 14mm f2.5. This lens is so small, so lightweight, the image quality taken using this lens is very sharp, very nice, very contrasty. I just like it so much. You can check out the review that I made about this lens right here. But also another reason why I will use this lens as my primary lens is because of the focal length. This lens is just very versatile in my opinion. 14mm is a very flexible focal length. I can use it for environmental wide angle portrait, I can use it for landscape photography, for street photography, for food photography, that kind of stuff. It's just such a versatile lens and I think I will be able to use this lens for many different kinds of applications and I really hope that this lens will deliver. Next lens is the Panasonic Lumix 20mm f1.7. If the 14mm is a wide angle kind of lens, then this will be the normal kind of lens. 20mm is more telephoto compared to 14mm. So if I want a little bit more emphasis on my subject, if I want more background blur, if I want something a little bit tighter, more telephoto, then I will use the 20mm f1.7. Anyway, this lens is also small, it's also lightweight, it's very compact, so it's easy for me to carry it around. And the image quality of pictures taken using this lens is just fantastic. Everything is sharp, nice, and contrasty. One thing that I don't really like from the 20mm is obviously the autofocus. It's a little bit slow, but I can still tolerate it and I don't think it will be a big of a problem. Next lens is my ultra wide angle lens and for that I will bring my Laowa 7.5mm f2 just in case I need to take an ultra wide angle kind of picture then I will use this guy right here. This is another fantastic lens because this is a wide angle lens but it has a really large aperture of f2 so it really helps in lower light situation. It's kind of unique because this lens is also small not as small as the 20mm or the 14mm, but still small in microfoto standard and it's also lightweight, not too heavy. This lens is a manual focus only lens, so that's a little bit of thing that I have to keep in mind. I have to be careful with the focusing ring because usually with this kind of lens, I will just leave it on the hyperfocal distance on the focusing ring and just kind of forget about it. But if it gets inside my camera bag, maybe I will knock the manual focusing ring and the focus will shift and that might be a problem. So I have to keep reminding myself of that in the future during the trip. But anyway, the pictures taken using this lens is also very satisfactory. This is really sharp, this is really contrasty, really nice as a wide angle lens. Two things that I need to be careful of is that this lens is very prone to flare and ghosting and also there's a little bit of vignetting going on but I don't think it will be a big problem for me. I just need to be careful. Next lens, my absolute favorite lens of the year. <laughs> this is the Panasonic Lumix 35 to 100 millimeter. So this will be my telephoto lens if I wanna photograph something far away, especially for landscape photography. If I wanna do that compression kind of effect, then I will use this lens. If I wanna photograph an animal uh, far away, maybe not really into wildlife photography, but just overall something that will give me enough reach to get the subject proportionally into the frame, then I will use this guy right here. This telephoto lens is just so small, so lightweight, 
very easy to carry around. It weighs almost nothing, so putting it inside my camera bag won't be a problem at all. The focal length is equivalent to 70 to 200 millimeter in full frame terms, and the image quality is just really nice. It's fantastic in my opinion. Very sharp, very contrasty. There's no really bad thing going on like flaring and ghosting and vignetting. So I can really depend on this lens when I need a telephoto lens for travel. Last but not least, I will also carry the Panasonic Lumix 12 to 32 mm f3.5 to f5.6 kit lens that comes with my Panasonic GX85 as a backup zoom lens. So the 14 mm lens that I mentioned earlier is a prime lens. It only has one focal length. This lens is a zoom lens, so it's more versatile. If I need something that can zoom from wide angle to slightly more telephoto, then I will use this lens instead. This lens is also small, also lightweight, very compact, and the image quality is also really nice. Everything is sharp, everything is very contrasty. The only problem with this lens is that it flares a lot. There's plenty of ghosting, especially when you're shooting into bright sunlight. But I don't think that's also a problem for me. I just need to be careful about my composition and my angle to avoid that problem entirely. So now quickly, I want to share my non micro footage cameras and accessories as well. First is this guy right here. This is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. This is a new camera. I just got it a few weeks ago and I'm really happy with this camera. This camera will be used for my POV photography vlog. Uh, by the way, you can check out my other vlogs right here. You can watch that right here. But I will use this camera to record that kind of footage because this camera is just really nice. The video quality taken using this camera is excellent. Sharpness is just fantastic. Low light performance is really nice. And then also this camera features one inch sensor. It's not too far off from micro for the sensor. So that means I can get more background blur with this little video camera right here. And it also features built in gimbal. So all of the footage recorded using this camera will be stable and smooth. So there's not a whole lot of shakiness going on hopefully. So yeah, that's the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Other camera that I will bring on this trip is this little guy right here. This is the Insta360 Go To little camera. This is almost like an action camera that's just uh, as large as the size of your thumb. So it's really small, really cute. I will use this for uh, like underwater kind of scenes or for like doing street photography where I don't want to be seen with this big vlogging camera, then I will use this little camera instead. So those are all the non micro footage cameras. For carrying my camera and lenses, I will be using a small messenger bag. This is the Alpaca Go Sling Mini. I have a review about this bag up here, but this is not a photography camera bag. This is just a normal sling bag. It doesn't look like an expensive camera bag. And that's the thing that I like about it. It's very inconspicuous. It doesn't scream expensive gear inside. It just looks like a normal sling bag. And it's plenty of space for my camera and lenses. I can bring one camera body and four lenses inside this a little sling bag right here. And the material is just really nice. It's waterproof, not waterproof, but water resistant. So it will give me that peace of mind, especially when shooting in less than ideal weather. It is also lightweight and I will use this as my personal item inside the airplane. So that's all of the camera gear that I will bring with me on this upcoming trip. And that wraps up today's video. So that is all for today's video. I hope that today's video is useful, informative, and inspiring to you. So please let me know in the comment down below. Uh, what camera and lenses that you will bring on your upcoming trip. Also, if you have any question about today's video, please comment down below as well and I will try to answer them. Also, don't forget to support my channel by liking this video, sharing this video and subscribing to my channel down below. And if you want to support my channel even further, consider using the affiliate links on the description below or use the super thanks button. Thank you and see you on the next video. Goodbye.